playing it. Hat. Yep. Okay, let me know when it's done. It's done. Yay! I love my educational intro. I'm getting better at the uh, editing. So yeah. I'm, I'm proud about that. Funny! Yes? If you're like me, you're no doubt a big fan of this podcast. I mean, who is it? This is the number one podcast in America. It's, of course, the, uh, you know, the, the, the liberal left who's silencing us. Yeah. Uh, as a podcast, we have to say that once a week. We're, we're, we're liberal trash, as uh, someone on uh, Apple Podcast called us. Um, so, but only the real fans, the true fans who have been with us since day one would know the, the two main facts about the both of us, two undeniably really real and in no way made up on the spot facts about the both of us, America's hottest podcasting couple, Bunny and Mei Lin. First and foremost, Bunny, is the fact that when you're not doing a, the podcast, you are a celebrated collector. Now tell us, Bunny, what is it that you collect, and why is it so important to you? I collect... Well, this had started when when I, I was a New Yorker, you know, and you would, you would go down into the subway, you know, and you had the, the big iron kind of gate around it i don't know exactly what you would call it big fucking heavy iron thing around the subway entrance and you would frequently find old gum stuck under under those railings so that is what i've become a collector of i have i have been collecting used dried gum from various places and i am using the gum to extract dna to fill out the human genome project nice nice what he's it's got, important he's got work. the biggest used gum collection this side of the mississippi oh, that was it's it's pretty impressive it it, it okay. how are you Yes, how are you cataloging it, Bunny? Natasha wants to know specifics. How? Well, basically, when I find a good specimen of used gum, okay, I just reuse, rechew it and spit it in a Petri dish. That's my process. No, you, you don't get the science, honey. You don't get the science. Bunny's a professional. Oh. Okay. Yeah. yeah, Bunny's a professional. And the second fact, which is about me, is that I'm a lover of history. I love it, but I'm also a storyteller. So this is the part of the podcast where we discuss a story from history, maybe one that people don't really know, and I get to reword it a little bit via my own unique storytelling razzmatazz. So that is what this is, another educationally uneducational installment of Historic Approximations, or as we like to call it, Give me some dramatic music, Bunny. Dun, 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 dun. And to be clear, that's spelled capital H, capital A, but small p. The small p is key. It's crucial, crucial to the entire ebb and flow of the podcast. And also, it doesn't matter how small the segment is, but how well we use it. Anywho, what is happening on HAP this week? Well, this week it's all about... Hashtag girl power. It's a very special hap. I'm really excited for it. And because it's a special hap, I'm going to start near the end of the story. And then we're going to go back to the beginning. Okay. Okay. You follow me here, Bunny? Yes, I do. Okay. So here we go. It's the 1880s. And we're in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Massachusetts. More specifically, we are at the Harvard Observatory. And the staff of the Harvard Observatory is 100% stressed the F out. Oh, so much work. It's 1880. Ah, doing so much. I'm sweating. Ooh, this is so difficult. They're 
working on developing a method to photograph the spectra of multiple stars at once, which has never been done before. And also, I like the word spectra. It sounds like you're a kid. First off, I think of poor spectra vision. Yeah. That stuff they had in the in the hotels and motels. Follow the end. And, uh, but also when I think of spectra with finger quotes, I'm using finger quotes for those of you who are listening to this podcast and not watching it. Um, when I think and, of and spectra, why, it and, sounds and, like, and why aren't you watching? Why aren't you watching lazy yeah, Sunday watching? afternoon? What else is going on? You know, you hang with us for a little while. You get Natasha says chat, maybe you're blind. You know, what's that? Maybe they're blind. Don't be ableist, bunny. No, that's even if you're blind, I speak in Braille. So it's perfectly okay. Don't be ableist, be canist. That's yeah. a biblical joke. <laughs> so Spectra reminds me of okay, you're in the eight you're the eight, you're in the eighties, and you're a kid, and you want a video game system. I want a Nintendo. Or a Sega Master System, or or even a ColecoVision at this point, and your parents are like, "Hey, it's okay. Look, we got you this, and it's a Golga Frinchum Industries Spectra Five Thousand, and it's like, okay, it doesn't have Pac Man. It has Nibble Guy. You know, yeah. it doesn't have Space Invaders. It's Alien Intruders." Oh and no! There, were, yeah, there were all know, sorts of things back like that back in the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Spectra sounds to me like, like, oh, your parents couldn't afford it. It's fine. But, but Spectra to me sounds like a sixty spy show. Ooh, you know, and they and they would work for Spectra. Yeah. Special. It sounds like the yeah. good guy spies. Rex Dart, Eskimo spy. He works yes. for Spectra. Yes, exactly. What? Was cable around in the 60s? No. No, it was not. It'd be really cool if they were. It does sound like a cable network. Spectra? A cable network? Yeah. No, no, no. They could the company is cable company. But if cable company was around in the 60s, then that wouldn't work. No, that it wouldn't work. work. No. It doesn't work for plumbing. Doesn't work for plumbing. No. So the staff at Harvard Harvard Observatory are stressed out, and their boss, an angry looking dude named Edward C. Pickering, is yelling at everyone. I know it be the 1880s, but y'all fucking pissing me the hellish <laughs> office. You need to work harder, damn it. We're trying to do the impossible here. I need you to work hard, super hard. I mean, my Scottish friggin' maid would work better and work harder than your sorry asses, uh, forsooth. Yes. It's the 1880s. So, that's near the ending. Now let's go back to the beginning. Williamina Stevens was born in Dundee, Scotland, on May 15, 1857, L. Frank Baum was born exactly one year prior. I thought I'd just add that. Also, while we're being distracted, when visiting Dundee, Scotland, be sure to visit Glamis Castle. It's huge. It's beautiful. It's some third descriptor. And according to Mr. Willie Shakespeare, it's where Macbeth killed Duncan. Yes. Also, uh, the castle is supposed to be haunted, and they do have ghost tours. Now, I don't know if they have adult ghost tours after 10 p.m. where you can drink whatever the hell you want, and you can say whatever the hell you want. But if you do go to Glamis Castle and you're taking an adult uh, ghost tour, don't just start saying jizz. Okay. And a uh, huge cum shot because you'll probably get kicked out. That's another I think you should leave reference. That's the second I think you should leave reference of this episode. Um, uh, and also, 
I thought her name, nay, I assumed her name was Williamina, but no, it's Williamina. Okay. Like a female William. It's not Wilhelmina. It's Williamina. There's an end in the middle somehow, there. William, somehow that makes more he, sense. It, 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 yeah, I thought it was Wilhelmina, but no, it's Williamina, as in William. Oh shit, it's a girl. I guess it can be Williamina. Yeah, and then and and so, and then as time passes, we start pronouncing thing more things more and more sloppily. And then Wilhelmina. Maybe. You might think, well, maybe her father's name is... No, her father's name was fucking Robert. I looked it up. Yeah. So it's William mean William Ina. Yeah. Honestly, I think that alone is half-worthy, but we haven't even gotten to the meat and potatoes yet of William Ina's story. So uh, William Ina Stevens... Born in 1857, she's very smart. She's so smart that at the age of 14, she becomes a teacher's assistant. She becomes knowledgeable in just every category. She knows math. She knows science. She knows astronomy. She knows all of these things. At the age of 20, like you do, she married a local widower, and together they had one child, a son named Wilhelmino. Just kidding. His name was Ed. Okay. His name was Edward, not Wilhelmino. But her name is William Ina. It's weird. Yeah. Uh, so they're married. This this guy, James the Widower, and William Ina. A year later, James the Widow is all, my darling William Ina. It's a weird ass name. But anyway. It's the 1870s, and we're foreigners. So thematically, it makes sense for us to emigrate to America, a place where they will always love and welcome foreigners. All foreigners will always be welcome there, even in the far distant future. They will be like, yes, immigrants, come on in. We're totally cool with it. Uh... So, uh, William, Ina, uh, gather up our son and our few belongings and get on this boat. Don't worry, darling. I won't just straight up leave you once we get to America. Wink. So, they get on the boat. All right. They the, the drugs are, the drugs are ki kicking in. I'm still kind of stuck on Wilhelmina, and we just got the fucking warning. Yeah, 10-minute warning. Yeah. William, Ina. William. Not Wilhelmina. Ina. It's Williamina. There's an M in there. It's weird. But now, now. Williamina. I'm wondering, I'm wondering if, like, the first person who was ever named that, if their father wasn't, like, a real Andrew Tate type who was yeah. like, I am so masculine. Of course I will have a male child. I only need to choose one name. William. I was thinking that. Yeah, I was thinking that. That's all I can think of. I mean, it is like Scotland in the 1880s. I don't think yeah. that there was that much uh, feminism. Yeah, then. And, and, and then it turns out to be a girl because there was no sonogram or anything like that. You know? Yeah. And he just storms out of the room and leaves, and they just tack a mina on the end. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's what it was. So, uh... So the husband is like, hey, get on the boat. We're going to America. I'm not going to leave you when we get there. They emigrate to Boston, Massachusetts. But you wouldn't believe what the husband does once they get there. A goat. He just, uh, he just stop and leaves. Can you believe that? Yeah. So the hubby leaves the family and William Mina is like, damn, I need to get me a job, any job, like with a quickness. Plus, she is an immigrant, so uh, aren't a lot of jobs just available. She gets a lowly job as a maid. Cleaning up after this rich-ass family, she took the first job that she could, which was as a maid. Um, she just so happens to get a job 
being a maid at the home of Professor Edward Charles Pickering, the director of the Harvard College Observatory. See where this is going, Bunny? Okay. So Edward's wife, Liz, notices a few things, goes to her husband, hu hubby Edward, and goes, um, hey, honey, can you come here? I want to have a talk with you for a second. Our new maid? Our new maid is smart. And then, I don't know, he's reading the paper. Oh, gee, that's nice, dear. No, Edward. She's, like, way fucking smart. <laughs> Like, way beyond just being a maid. She's, she's teaching our kids reading and writing and math and astronomy. Apparently, she used to be a teacher's assistant. She is a smart-ass woman, honey. Like, way beyond just being some immigrant maid that we hired off the street. She is smart as hell. Yeah. She's way beyond just being a maid. She's more than that. And so that was on Edward C. Pickering's mind when, rewind... The staff at Harvard Observatory are super stressed out. Edward Pickering is yelling at them. I know it be if the 1880s, but y'all fucking pissing me the hell off. Okay. Come on, we're working here. You need to work hard. You need to work harder than you are working now. Damn it. My Scottish maid would work better and work harder. And so Professor Pickering did just that. He's just like, my maid would work harder than... Fuck it, what do I got to lose? Will Williamina, weird-ass name. Come here, Williamina. So he hired his maid, Williamina, to conduct part-time administrative work at Harvard Observatory in the 1880s. Uh, and she did great. She did so great that two years later, they formally invited her to join the Harvard College Observatory as a full-fledged astronomer. They taught her what she needed to know that she didn't know already, and she became this immigrant. She became a founding member of a legendarily famous team of astronomers that were known as the Harvard Computers. William Ina, hate the name, she single-handedly developed, and I quote, a common designation system for stars and cataloged uh, more than 10,000 stars, 59 gaseous nebulae, over 310 variable stars, 10 nova, and other astrological phenomenons, and also, Bunny, do you know the Horsehead Nebula? I uh, not personally. Well, a poor Scottish female immigrant discovered that. Act. Yeah. Isn't that great? Uh, hashtag girl boss. <laughs> hashtag girl boss. Good for William Ina. She uh was a. Uh, just a Scottish immigrant whose husband left her and became a super famous astronomer. She was a maid. She went from yeah. cleaning up children's shit to discovering the Horsehead Nebula. Yes. I gotta say, every single solitary hat that I have done, and just like me, this used to be called SHAP, Steve's Historic Approximations, yeah. but it the the podcast segment transitioned into HAP. All the HAPs and SHAPs I've done, each one could be a fairly decent movie. I can see this movie about Williamina. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like Hidden Figures. Hidden Figures. That was a great movie. I loved Hidden Figures. It is really good. But uh, I know I say this usually at the end of every uh, historic approximations, but I'm going to say it again. I'm shocked that more people don't know this story. I'm surprised no, that more I, people oh, don't know this story. This is awesome. I, I haven't heard the full story like that, but I, I've heard that story previously. 
Yeah, it's a great story. It's like great, as a it's meme. It's a feel-good story. Like as a meme. Like I didn't read a fucking article or something. It was some yeah. meme. I, I'll hire my maid. And did, and she became this. You know? Yeah. She became super famous. Good for her. Yeah, uh, yeah. That is that is pretty awesome. That is... Yay. I would put that right next to the Hedy Lamar story. Yes. You know? Hedy Lamar. You know, because so- that was... That was it, 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 like if you if you found out that Pamela Anderson had discovered quantum particles, Pamela Anderson, oh Stripperella, gotcha. Right. I mean that's kind. Of, I mean that's not. Hedy Lamar was Barb a Wyatt. hot woman. Yeah. She she was I'm- you know model beautiful. Yeah. And did such amazing, just like a fucking genius. Like, just off the scale genius she was. Uh, I, I, I like that they gave Talia Shire more to do in the third rock. Yeah. Now, this is the least she has to do, but she has that monologue where she snaps Rocky out of it. Yeah. I don't know if she. Anyway, uh, we'll get that into that. That is it. <laughs> That's it for historical approximations this week. Be sure and join us next week for more educationally uneducational fun with historic approximations. And cut on that.